Hello, my name is Animal Harsing, and today we'll be talking about doing a literature review. And these are actually 12 steps um, that I've outlined in an article I published in 2002, uh, where I show that even many academics, established academics, aren't doing this correctly. I've called it, are our referencing errors undermining our scholarship and credibility? I studied it is in the case of uh, expatriate failure rates in the area of international HRM, but referencing areas referencing errors um, happen unfortunately in any discipline. So we'll go through an example to show you what can go wrong if you reference a particular work badly. So let's assume that we have an article that's uh, published by a particular Mr. or Mrs. Smith or Professor Smith um, in the Academy of Management Journal and that contains the following statements. Studies have shown that two thirds of the international mergers and acquisitions fail with three references following the statement. That's quite common. Um, it's often three references um, and we've talked about this in how many references are enough. Um, so there's nothing uh, wrong with this particular statement. But now um, you are going to use this in your own study. You are going to use this information in your own study. So how you should not do this is say, for instance, Smith has shown that two thirds of the international mergers and acquisitions fail. Why not? Because Smith hasn't actually done this. Smith hasn't actually done a study that showed this. Smith had just referred to three other authors that have, stu have done studies on this. What you also cannot do, and this might be very, very tempting, and I know that lots of people do this, uh, but it's still not good practice. What you also shouldn't do is say two thirds of the international mergers and acquisitions fail and put the references in. So literally um, using the same statement as Smith has done. First of all, if you use the exact same statement, that's plagiarism. But even if you reformulate it a little and then use the same references, that's still not all right. Unless you've gone back to all three references yourself and verified that this information is actually in these articles. Because otherwise you're relying completely on Smith to establish that this information is actually correct. And you don't know whether Smith has actually looked at all of these references herself or himself. So, as I said before, um, you shouldn't use secondhand references. So use the references that someone else has found. But there might be other things that can go wrong with this. Let's assume this is a 2005 article, as I said, and you're using it in your thesis in 2020. Then our references in 1982 and 1990 still relevant. They might already have been a bit old in 2005, but in 2020, they are really old. So can we still be sure that two thirds of international mergers and acquisitions fail in 2020? Maybe they're far less or maybe they're more, but um, you don't know until you look at more recent evidence. Then, are these, four, these three references actually reliable sources? Remember, we went through these seven steps and reliability was an important one of them. Are these reliable sources? They are probably reliable sources if they come from other academic journals, but in some cases you might find that the reference actually refers to a magazine article um, or even a newspaper article, which we wouldn't consider reliable enough to use in academic writing. Then 
are these references actually generalizable? Is the scope significant enough? And we've talked about this in seven steps as well, scope. So um, if these references, for instance, will all in one particular country, if all of these references only looked at, for instance, um, US multinational corporations or British multinational corporations or um, Tanzanian multinational corporations or Chinese multinational corporations, it doesn't matter what country it is, but if they only looked at multinational corporations from one particular country, you don't know whether this is valid for multinational corporations all over the world. Or if they only looked at multinational corporations in one particular industry, you don't know whether it's true in other industries. Or if they only looked at multinational corporations operating in one particular host country, you don't know whether it's relevant in other host countries. So the scope of the reference also needs to be sufficient to be able to draw a generalized conclusion. Then also be aware that if people are using these secondhand references, then the next person might maybe remove one of the references and put one instead, or might remove all of the references. And I might simply say two thirds of the multinational corporations, uh, sorry, two thirds of the mergers and acquisitions fail and leave out the international. So you've suddenly changed it from international mergers and acquisitions to all mergers and acquisitions, even if they happen within the same country. It's an easy mistake to make, but it completely changes um, the statement you make. And then finally, what can also go wrong, and that might be going wrong in the very first step, is being too impressed by top journals. The Academy of Management Journal is one of the top three journals in the field of management. So we would normally expect that articles that are published in these journals are top quality articles. That's generally the case, absolutely, but it doesn't mean that every single reference in that article is necessarily top notch. Even publications in top journals might occasionally include things that are not quite as they should be. So don't think just because an article has been published in a top journal that every single word in that article can be relied upon. I'm not saying that you can't rely on the article as a whole, but don't just assume that every single reference is okay because the article might well contain 200 references and you don't know whether the author has checked every single reference themselves, even though we all know we should 